Robert Tilton. Of abundance. The prophet of God said he heard the sound of abundance. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. To have the very life and the nature of God infused and recreated into your human spirit man. Think about it. Eternal life. This is what having the forgiveness of your sins is all about so that God can impart his nature into you. Can you imagine being born of the Spirit of God and having the life, the nature, the personality, the creativity, the ability of God, his wisdom, his divine direction, his purpose unfolding like a beautiful flower in your life? That's what Jesus Christ came to do. He came to satisfy divine justice, pay the penalties of our sins, once and for all established it, a new covenant cut by the stripes of his own body, and now we have the free gift of eternal, everlasting, endless life, the very nature of God. Oh, I hear the sound of abundance. All I've got to do is get you listening from your heart and not what your senses will be telling you. As we learn to walk and live by the faith of God and not by what sight is telling us, we can move out of discouragement into encouragement. We can move out of expiration into inspiration. The divine creativity of God you that are believers, God lives on the inside of you. But the devil loves to, loves to lie and convince us that we're nothing, problems, we're never going to go forward. But I hear the Lord saying, tell my people to go forward, press in, take by the force of faith the things that belong to them in our inheritance. Well, we're going to have an incredible broadcast today. Divine inspiration is going to be imparted into you. And uh, we're, I'm going to show you how to create money today or basically loose it into your life. Answers all in the next 60 minutes. Right now, here comes a dear, dear friend of ours, Candy Staten, as she ministers in song, and this is where we're going, Higher Ground. feet up on higher ground and not be moved. That's what happened to Peter. Peter says, I'm tired of sitting in this boat doing nothing, trapped with everybody else with doubt and unbelief and fear. You know, one of the biggest problems a believer has, a Christian, one that has accepted Christ, is the lack of knowledge. You know lack of knowledge produces fear? Because we know knowledge and God's Word produces faith. Understanding correctly. Eyes have not seen the senses. Ears have not heard. Neither hath it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those who love Him. But by His Spirit He reveals them to you. His sheep hear His voice. He talks to our heart in a still, small voice. You know, the last few days, I've had a new way God's been talking to me. It's very interesting. It's not like in a, a word. It's like in a continual knowing something, like a continual thing, like a continual, well, that's one of those new things. He said, any man that be in Christ, old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So we got some new things going on in our life, new ways that God talks to us. And we've got, we've got his love. 
We've got his ability. We've got his creativity on the inside. Create, create, create. Now listen to me. With the ability and the wisdom, wisdom is the ability to use knowledge to bring about something new. We have the faith of God to create our world. God lets us in on an insight in the book of Hebrews where it says in the 11th chapter, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things that are seen and even not seen were not made by things that appear but by the spiritual force of faith, by the word of God. Words are powerful. They can create constructive or they can be destructive. Jesus said, if you don't doubt in the heart but believe the things you say, Mark 11, 22, 23, if you don't doubt in the heart but believe, get to the place that you... When you understand Romans 5, 17, for, for, for the gift of righteousness, we reign as kings in life, that we can literally begin to take dominion and exercise our spiritual authority and release that creative force of faith for healing, for peace, for joy, you know, happiness is on the outside if all the conditions are just right, but joy of God is on the heart. It's one of the fruit of, of learning how to live out of your heart. Most people never live out of their heart. They're, they're, they're hidden man, they're the real you inside. They live out of their senses or how things look. James and Janet simply sh heard me in their heart one day teaching on how to create prosperity, blessing create a new home, create a better job, create a better place to live, create something nice for someone else. That's a word for someone. I am so excited about this substance known as faith, the creative ability of God. It's not limited to my ability. God knows no limit. He can get you out of any mess. In fact, in, 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 in Psalms 50, 14, it says, if we'll make a vow, a covenant with him, and worship him through our giving, a thanksgiving offerings. In the day of trouble, he said, I will hear thy prayer and I will deliver thee and you will glorify him. Well, here's James and Janet with an incredible testimonial of how they simply were a doer of the word and not a hearer only. Watch this. Mama was dead. On too many occasions, it was the children's bedtime, and Daddy still wasn't home from the office. Daddy was always at work. Uh, Daddy worked during the week, he worked on the weekends, Saturday and Sundays. Uh, I got that finished with church, I would go to work. And I would spend an enormous amount of time worrying and trying to solve my own problems. Janet knew that James was frustrated and clueless how to rescue his new printing business from the national economic slump, how to keep his lifelong dream from going out of business and taking their bank collateral home, cars, and life savings with it. Once thriving sales figures had plummeted, and because of the economy, James couldn't even get paid for the printing he was selling. I physically tried. You know, I would call suppliers up and um, try to get advance payments or get payments on time or COD and like uh, nothing would happen. Nothing would happen. In other words, I was making money, but at the same time I was losing it. I was making it, but I couldn't finance. James's Christian faith began to slip as he gradually fell into a routine of socializing with fellow businessmen and his employees after work. James sought alcoholic comfort, trying to escape from his depression through the so-called happy hours at bars and lounges. One minute we're on business and then we're drinking cocktails and then we're off into the twilight zone in so many words. And uh, that was my form of escaping, you know. Um, 
I didn't realize it at the time, but that's what it was. James's life was sliding into a deep pit. And at home, since frequently personal salary had to be sacrificed to keep employees paid, his family's bills were mounting and unpaid. James and Janet were facing imminent financial collapse. That pressure, combined with panic and fear, hungrily gnawed at Janet's Christian faith until she began to discover a ray of light, a brightening beam of light projected from a common color television tube. Do something! Do something! So just sitting there. Janet discovered the vowing principle through success in life with Robert Tilton. Janet's first vow produced startling results. And that next following week, we received a, a big check in the mail. I mean, a big check. And unexpected? Then, unexpected money. Big money. Five digits. James began to watch success in life and began to feel encouraged and uplifted, truly hopeful for the first time about a solution to his business and personal problems. He didn't know Janet had already vowed to the ministry. Now, he told Janet, he was ready to vow himself. When he said it was okay, the next day we received $20,000. Well, when he said $20,000, it could have been... No. 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 You weren't expecting no, it to come it, in that it, day. All along, it was unexpected money. It just seemed like the Lord pushed the people and said, send it now. Another financial miracle, twice in a row. And with that result, James and Janet recognized God's hand was directly putting the pieces back together in their business, at home, and with James's personal life. He stopped drinking totally. Not only vow financially, but also vow physically vow yourself and that's when I vowed that I was going to stop drinking I said I was going to stop drinking and I just physically stopped right then and there and with spiritual rejuvenation came unprecedented business success printing sales increased 500 percent in six months God called Janet into the business to work alongside her husband, and the two of them have formed a dynamic business team. Their company landed huge corporate printing contracts. They've found increasing favor in the banking and business community, enabling them to finance growth. And to make sure they're always in God's favor, James and Janet incorporated the principle of vowing into the business. Each and every payroll period, as checks are written to employees, a check is also automatically issued to pay on vows. That's the purpose of, of, of obeying by his principles, is that you have a peace that the world doesn't have. For the Lord will give you a peace in the midst of the storm. With an amazing financial testimony from Detroit, for Success in Life, I'm David Hunter. It seems amazing to the natural-minded person. But James and Janet simply stepped out of the boat that they were in. And they moved on up to higher ground, learning how to walk by faith instead of sight. That's one of the many things that vow of faith, that covenant with God, which is all scriptural, does. It places a serious demand force of faith out there in the spirit world for a release of things that have been held back. It, another thing that it does, it really gets your focus off the problem and gets your focus on the solution. What God said. God said. Right here in Psalms 50, offer unto God thanksgiving. Pay thy vows unto the Most High. And he's speaking here. And call unto me in the day of trouble. I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. Psalm 76, 11, vow and pay unto the Lord your God. Let all that be round about him bring presents unto him that ought to be feared. He shall cut off the spirit of the princes, or the principalities and powers, in the spirit world, that's heavenly spirit world, 
We cannot see in the natural, but they're out there trying to steal, kill, and destroy your blessings that are your inheritance. I love this one, Psalm 66. You want another one? This is David. Went through the fire, 12th verse, went through the fire and through the water, but thou brought us, us out into a wealthy place. I will go into thy house with burnt offerings. I will pay thee my vows, which my lips, there's those words, have uttered, and my mouth has spoken when I was in trouble. That Psalms 50 from the NIV translation, the 23rd verse says, He who sacrifices thanks offerings, God says, honors me, and he prepareth the way so that he may show him his salvation. That somehow or another, it, that faith gets out there in a particular direction. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. It's the force of faith. Matthew 11, from the day, 12th verse, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. What does that mean? You have to take the things that are yours literally out of the hands of the devil. You have to become aggressive, violent faith, violent faith. You've got to do something that goes against how things look, how you feel, what, how, what's going. You've got to do it. You, this seems to be another one of the things the vow does. It gives a breaking through, a breaking out, a pressing in, and a loosing of whatever Satan has been stealing. Thank you, Lord. I don't know why God put this in the Bible. I think it's part of his stewardship package program, insurance policy. He said in Malachi 3, he said the people are cursed because they've robbed him of their tithes and offerings, but he said if we would prove him now, herewith, that he would open the windows of heaven. What has been opened will be loosed and rebuke the devourer. Satan gets rebuked and has to let go of what's yours. Just then I saw a person. Something has been closed, closed, closed. Closed, stopped up, something closed, stopped, something closed, something stopped. If you will make that vow of faith to God through this ministry, it's a thousand dollars, doesn't mean you have it, but you just begin to pay on it weekly or monthly, twenty dollars here, five dollars, just just worship God. It's something wonderful. It's going to be a breakthrough for you. There's a person just, I saw a person just in, and I am not speaking this to everyone. I am not sent to everyone. Only those who hear what I'm saying based on the authority of God's Word. There's a person watching me. For the last several years, it's like things were working, but then things started stopping, shutting down. Like something, a door closed, something happened. And you've been, what I'm seeing, you've been in this, this kind of a, nothing happening. Stuck. Stuck. And you've been having thoughts like, this is, is this the rest of my life? No, it's not. That's a lie of the devil. And I'm speaking by the Spirit of God. This is your new beginning, your new thing. A new thing is going to start happening in your life. A new thing, a new thing, new things. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things, all things become new. A new thing in your life, a new thing. And that, I'm hearing it very strong. There's a person watching me. Call me right now and say to my prayer minister, I want to make a vow, a covenant with God by faith. And as God provides the seed, 2 Corinthians 9, 8, for the sower and your bread for eating, that's your harvest, he will multiply. Everybody say the word multiply. God's a multiplier. May grace and peace be multiplied through knowledge there in Ephesians. There's a person watching me. You can't sit there another second. You cannot sit there another second. Oh, I know I'm shaking you up. I know I'm getting you out of your uncomfortable comfort zone. 
Do you want to stay like that the rest of your life, or you want to put some more faith out there on the waters? And as you begin to pay on it, you're seeding into lives of others through this evangelistic Christian ministry. There's another person watching me. You recently went through a real serious, some, some kind of troubles. Just make the vow. It's $1,000. Just make that millennium vow. Don't look at it with, don't touch it with your natural mind. Don't you understand I'm trying to get you into faith? It took faith for Peter to step out of that boat. He, he had to keep his eyes on Jesus. You've got to keep your eyes on the horizon. Don't look at the immediate temporal things. The temporal things go up and down like this every day, like water waves. You've got to look at the long term, G looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher. Finishing is better than starting. The finisher of our faith. That perspective, you know, on a boat, you get seasick if you start looking at the immediate waves around you. They always tell you to get your eyes back on the horizon where it's stabilized. Look beyond those up and down waves of life. Hoo -pa -pa. There's a woman watching me, and your husband has been going through, cool, but let, me, let me get this right. There's a woman watching me, and your husband has go, been going through a lot of pressure and stress because his income is not just doing the right amount. That's a negative. The positive is, this is a word for someone if you can hear it, the positive is that God's going to turn that negative into a positive. Your husband is getting very uncomfortable because God wants to move him into a greater dimension mm -hmm. of faith. See, it's, the problem doesn't start outwardly, though there's outward problems. The big problem is inwardly, spiritually. And I've got to get you from living outwardly to living inwardly from your heart. I have to do that. I have to fight the fight of faith. I have to keep my eyes on the Lord. I have to listen to God's Word. I have to meditate in His Word every day. I, know, I can tell when I'm getting low on fuel and I just start building myself back up and stirring myself up in God and, and keeping, making sure my eyes are looking unto Jesus and seeking first the kingdom of God. Thank you, Jesus. I'm speaking as a prophet for another person. I hear abundance for someone. I'm not saying rich or a millionaire, but I see abundance, abundance, abundance. What's going to happen? You're going to have more creativity released out of you, the creative ability of God. God's going to add up some things that he's taught you in the natural realm to bring about a new thing in your life. In these last days, the wealth of the sinner is going to come into the hands of the righteous, and that's you. Now, quickly, give me a call. Just tell my prayer minister, you want to make a covenant with God, a vow of faith. Maybe it's 500, 100, but there's one person in particular watching me. It's like you've just been stuck in some dimension of life. Just going, it, life is very dull and boring to you. But God wants to bring you into an exciting adventure with Him to be a bigger blessing to humanity than you've ever been before. Amen. We're going to go to another testimonial now with Angie, and let's just listen to what the Lord did for her when she dared to enter into that covenant with God and make Him her senior partner. Watch this. Angie set new goals for herself as a cosmetics company representative. She had dared to dream the seemingly impossible dream to become a director, a goal only 3% in the vast company's nationwide sales organization ever achieve. But things were not going well. Her sales goals seemed out of reach after months of trying. I just felt like um, I, I was working and working and doing what I, I thought I had to, to do, but I wasn't getting what I wanted out of it, and I wasn't seeing results and I just didn't know what to do. As Angie counted the cost, she remembered why she'd gotten into business for herself. We were never able to save. It just seems like every time my husband would get a, a raise or something, it just seemed like it, it, everything we needed just ate it up. With the financial pressure came the inevitable checkbook crises. I remember real I was clear in my, our old house where I was sitting in the chair and my husband came home and I was crying. 
The bank had called me. I was overdrawn. I didn't know what I had done. I didn't know where the money was going to come from. Angie found her own resources were inadequate to guarantee success, no matter how driven she was to set and achieve goals. And although she was a spirit-filled Christian who had dedicated her cosmetics business to God, Angie began to doubt God was in her corner. I thought that maybe God, you know, I wasn't picked out to, you know, um, succeed in this business because I just felt like I wasn't feeling God or, you know, nothing was happening and I just felt like, well, maybe it's not meant to be. Maybe God doesn't want me to have this. The way out of her despair revealed itself over television. I was laying on my bed and at that time in my business, I mean, I was down at the pits. I mean, I really was. Pits, pits, pits. And I was laying on my bed, and I was almost taking a nap, and Success in Life came on, and it, I kind of watched it over, you know, I really wasn't paying attention to it. And then he said that there was a businesswoman out there, you know, that God wants you to succeed. And I popped up, and I looked at it, and he said, you know, God wants you to make a $1,000 vow, and I just thought, oh, yeah. Angie says that something stirred in her that would not let go until she had called the ministry and made a vow. You had an unmistakable feeling that this was God directly well, intervening. I know it was. Because when I got off the phone, I started crying. I mean, and I had no reason to cry. I remember it. And what was, when you were crying, what was the feeling? Were you getting a, a release or what was happening? A total release. Um, I just, I felt just a total peace over my life that I knew things were going to be all right. I didn't know how, but I just knew it was. It was all going to come together for you? Mm-hmm. Angie credits that vow and an even larger one following, plus the Robert Tilton teaching tape, redeemed from the curse, released to the blessings, as starting a spiritual and financial revolution for prosperity in her life. And it just hit me, you know, that was it. You know, I don't have to struggle in life. I don't have to, you know, just live from week to week. I don't have to live with, you know, heartache or whatever. I can live above that because of what Jesus did on the cross for me. Angie's faith was fired up, and her rise in her company's sales organization has been phenomenal, accomplishing sales goals that brought her national honors and the legendary pink Cadillac. Angie went from 39th position to number eight in one month. Normally, it would take twice the sales consultants working under Angie to achieve what her unit has. Angie's income has tripled in less than half a year and enabled her to move into a new home with her family. You would think Angie's personal time would have suffered. Not at all. Angie works only 10 to 15 hours a week at home. She puts her family first, and God has poured on the blessings. When I first made the vow with Robert Tilton, I feel like I was over here. and. But now I feel like I have crossed over into a new dimension. I made a decision to live by faith, and that's how, you know, I live now. I don't live according to what things look like or how things seem they're going to be. I just live by faith. With a financial miracle from Illinois for Success in Life, I'm David Hunter. I love to hear the testimonials. See, signs follow the believer. But most believers are confused because they go of the way of Egypt and the world where they follow signs instead of signs following a believer. See, creativity is, creativity follows the believer. Think manifestations of their faith and the word coming as seed. Oh, yeah. These scriptures right here on vowing, God delivering you in time of trouble, that's seed. When you do it, it comes up. Jeremiah 1, 11 and 12, God watches over his word to bring it to pass, to perform it. James and Janet and Angie, they weren't all hung up on trying to figure out with their natural mind why it doesn't work. They listened to it with their heart. God said it. It has to work. 
heaven and earth will pass away, but God's word will never pass away. There's you three promises. Go back to Jacob. Genesis 26, when he had nothing, he vowed to God to give God a portion of all that God blessed him with, and signs followed him. You know what God did? God gave him a dream. It says, spending all your energy trying to tear this teaching down, why don't you believe it? I'm simply reading the Bible. You don't have to, like me or this broadcast, though we are doing an incredible work and have lots of fruit and results of the ministry. It's just in the Bible. And it's a word from God for you. The devil has hammered your brain telling you it's just a big joke. How can it be a joke when I'm giving you chapter and verse continually? Even Paul in the New Testament, I think it's Acts 18, made vows and went to Jerusalem to pay them. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. There's a person, if you'll do this, in the name of Jesus, based on the Word of God, faith, it's going to change your whole life. And, sister, there's a man too, attitude. Your attitude's messing up your life. Your attitude toward certain things, some religious junk has gotten in there and has messed your, there's a person watching me. And you're going to write me an incredible testimonial. If you will call and say it, get your mouth open. This is my vow, my covenant of faith. It's $1,000. And if you'll believe this word that I am prophesying out of my mouth and not back off and stay in faith, you're going to go out of a lackadaisical, humdrum life world into a new thing. There it is again, a new thing, a new adventure in God. There's also a person, something about changing location, changing location. You need to make a $1,000 vow of faith. Thank you, Jesus. There's a minister watching. You need to vow out of your church into the hot soil of this ministry. There's also a person, you are a home-based business person. I don't know if it's Amway or Multilevel or Mary Kay or whatever, but God has put something in your hand to do, and he's going to bless the work of your hands. You need to make a $1,000 vow, maybe take a year, six months, Pay on it weekly, $5, $20, $100. Pay it all at once. Do something to break into a greater force of faith. You have to press your way in. You have to, in the violent, take it by force. See, Satan knows that you have authority. And if you don't use your authority and operate in faith, he's got you captive, backed into a corner of debt. It's also a person you can attack debt. You don't back off giving to God when you have less money. That's the time you give more to God. Out of your need is the seed for a future harvest. Look at James and Janet. Accident? No. It was a sign following the believer. Some of you, you, just, you, ask, you call up these psychics and what's my future? Jesus asked blind Bartimaeus, what do you want? He didn't know he had a choice. You've got a choice what you want your life to be. You've got a choice what you want to do when, when, when we finally are received in that everlasting habitation and the books are open, what we've done for humanity and the cause of Christ in the earth. You've got a choice the kind of life you want for your family. You've got a choice the kind of car you drive. You've got a choice how healthy you want to be. You've got a choice how happy you want to be. You've got a choice where you want to live. You've got a choice how you want to put furniture in your house. You've got a choice. You don't have to ask somebody else, what is, what, what is my future? Have? No, Jesus said, what sort of things you desire? If you don't doubt in your heart, but believe what you say shall come to pass, you shall have whatsoever you say. Psalms 45, 1, my mouth is a pen of a ready writer. I'm writing my own ticket with God. He's given us an open check. He said, sign my name on it and fill it out on what you want to be a bigger blessing to bless humanity. I'm sitting here. I'm not begging you. I'm come with a blessing. You know the priest met Abraham on the way back from the battle with the kings, and Abraham tithed, and Melchizedek blessed him, pronounced a blessing on him. That's, it says, he that receives you, let a blessing come upon their house, a blessing into your house. That's what I'm doing. I'm bringing a blessing. I'm not a beggar. I'm a giver. I'm giving faith 
prosperity, salvation, creativity. I'm taking God's Word and I'm speaking it out of the Bible and I'm mixing the Word with faith and, and challenging you to do something with your life with the power and the ability of God that's working on the inside of you. You can be something, do something, have something. Forget about the skeptics and the critics and the persecutors. Romans 10 says, And I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus, for it's the power of God unto salvation for everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and on to the Greek and the Gentile. <laughs> Hallelujah. You Jewish people out there, get excited. Jesus, the Jewish Messiah, came to give you eternal life. The nature, ability, creativity, huh, the favor, the prosperity, the health, the wisdom, the joy, the peace, the gentleness, the long-suffering of God to come out of your being and, and to live this abundant, eternal, everlasting, endless life in Christ. Oh, hallelujah. I come to give you a blessing today to pronounce a blessing on your home. Thank you, Lord. There's a person, there's one person watching me. You need this. Your, your life is so dull. You need this. And that breakthrough is going to come, and God's going to do a new thing in your life. You need to call right now. When God gives a word like this, you know you can lose it within seconds. I've had a word from God, and something distracted me, and I lost it, and I couldn't even find it. Boy, when God speaks a word to you, you don't count it lightly. This earth belongs to God and the fullness thereof and the silver and the gold, and it does not belong to the devil, and it does not belong to the sinner. It belongs to the righteous, and God wants to put it into your hands, and he wants to see if he can trust you with his tithe, with his offerings, not to eat the seed, not give it to the dead, not use it for unclean use, but to take it to the place where God chose to put his name. There is an anointing of prosperity upon me. For God to bless the work of your hands. Now, if you're that person, I want you to call me right now. And don't let the enemy, st he says he comes immediately to steal that word. And I'll send you a cloth, a prayer cloth, some return envelopes, and so forth. I'll begin to minister to you the word of God through the mail. And your faith is going to grow. It starts on the inside. There's a person watching me. If you'll call right now and just say it, and just begin to live out of your spirit and just, just send in $20 or five, as you can. It gets into a rhythm of seed, time, and harvest with your faith. Here is uh, Gregory from Detroit, $1,000 vow of faith, in faith. Here's Teresa, one time $1,000. Tina, Michigan, $1,000. I think we're live up there. Here's Frankie from Georgia, Atlanta area, $1,000 prayer of faith. Here's a person right here pray with Pastor Children about being evicted from their apartment. They're now moving into their own home at the end of the month. Here's Betty from Mississippi, one-time $1,000 vow of faith. Here's Beverly from Florida, $1,000 vow of faith. Here's Michael, a $20 one-time vow of faith. You know, you've got to do what takes faith. We constantly are receiving incredible testimonials and praise reports of people who hooked up with God through the vow. Candy's going to come and minister another song. I'm still knowing that one person is out there. There's still a person that has not called yet. And God's all over you. And I want to tell you something. It's going to be a new beginning in your life. Here's another one from WV. Where is that? Wisconsin? West Virginia. West Virginia. <laughs> I've sent in on my vow to Pastor Tilton's ministry. My husband has had a promotion on his job. I've gotten a whole new wardrobe. My husband has brought me a new wedding ring. I think more husbands should buy their wives nice wedding rings. I believe that. I honestly do. I think those diamonds are out there to sparkle on a nice gal's hand. <laughs> and go buy a new dress today. Here's uh, Candy Staten singing, Go Tell It on the Mountain and Call While the Spirit of God is Moving. I hear the sound of abundance for you. Good morning, New York City. They come by the thousands into the city's financial district. A workforce of businessmen and women prepared to invest their time, their energy, and their money into a market that isn't always stable. Imagine how our lives as individuals could change if our time, our energy, and our money was invested or sown into the kingdom of God. The return can be astounding. We walked into the bank and we told the lady that we wanted to make this, on our, this last payment on our house. And I said, now this should be payment in full. And the whole, the whole bank, it was a small bank, 
there was about five ladies here. They couldn't believe it. You mean you've paid your house off? How did you do that? And I said, God has just richly blessed us. The Bible says in the book of Psalms, offer unto God thanksgiving and pay thy vows unto the Most High and call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver thee and thou shalt glorify me. I had approximately $16,000 worth of credit card debt build up. We made a vow for $1,000 that the Lord would deliver us from our experience and, and provide us with, with a job. I've been promoted uh, twice. My, I now make three and a half times the salary I made at the other, before my desert experience. I paid my taxes. I caught up on my house payments. I uh, paid the light bill. Completely got me out of debt. We received $25,000. And I began to, the first thing I said, I said, thank you, Jesus. I know it's the vow that I vowed to the Robert Tilton ministry. I just knew it was. We paid off our land, paid off the trailer. We uh, bought the pickup truck we, we needed desperately. It was from my vowing and my believing God. That vow, it just took us in a new dimension that we had never been in before. We had never experienced God's blessings like, like we do now. As you continue to pay on your sacred vow to God through this ministry, remember you are making a covenant that can launch you into God's circle of blessings. We are out of debt 100%. And making that vow just opened the door to show us with what God's got stored in our lives, you know, in our lives, what he's got stored for us. It was just totally unbelievable. And I can't walk around going, you know, this vow and stuff really works, doesn't it? <laughs> It was just amazing. When signs follow the believer, manifestations of God's word believed, spoken, acted upon with patience, steadfast, earnest effort, comes up. Some 30, some 60, and some 100 fold depending on how focused and dedicated you are to thinking, speaking, and acting on God's Word. There's still that one person. There's still a person out there. It's going to change your life. It's going to force you to make some decisions you haven't made yet. But if you'll do it, it's going to get you past that impasse of some indecision to moving on into what God has for you. And there's also a person watching needs to make a $1,000 vow of faith that's looking at a new home. And here's your word, Psalms 112. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man or woman, obviously, that feareth the Lord, that delighteth greatly in his commandments. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. Wealth and riches in your house means you're going to have a house. And wealth and riches are going to be in your house. I said wealth and riches, furniture, clothes, car in the garage, going to be in your house. I'm decreeing this. I'm decreeing this thing. Job 22, another one. Make a vow, pray. Pay it, and thou shalt decide and decree a thing. It's in there. There's another seed, another, some more of God's seed that he watches over. People that make vows, maybe it's 500 or 100, I don't know. But I know there's one for 1,000 that has not called. There's also a person that has a considerable size business. You need to really start giving out of your business to the work of God. You've been chinchy and stingy, and it's an attitude, a spiritual attitude, and it stopped down, shut down your flow. There's also a person needs to call right now before we go off the air. There's something about calling before we go off the air. There's something about calling before we go off the air. Boshanda alanda etando do da bosoya kambashata. For you've believed in me and loved me, saith the Lord of harvest. And you've said that everything that you have is mine. But you have not let go of some of the things that I've blessed you with. And you're living off yesterday's blessings. I've desired to do more for you than you've even desired to do for yourself. There are others that I want to bless through you. Allow me to be a blessing through you to others. And as you bless others, 
yea, even worshiping me, worshiping me with your tithes and offerings, fulfilling every vow, saith the Lord, you will have more blessings into your own life. Open up more your heart to give, and it will be given back unto you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, shall I give you favor and cause men to give into your life. For I am not a God that is afar off, but I am a God that takes your seed, yea, and gives you bread to eat and seed to sow and multiplies the seed that you sow. Do not pull back. Thank you, Lord. The person I just saw is a person that was a tither, was a giver. You've even made vows, but you've not gone on in further. God wants to take you further. Now listen, the further you go with God, the less you rely upon your feelings. God can only take you far as he, you will allow him. But senses are limited. You need to call right now, not another second before we go off the air. There's also a person who needs to make a $5,000 vow of faith. There's also one that needs to make that thousand for a house, something for a house. There's also a business person that needs to call immediately. I don't mean tomorrow, I mean right now. You saw what God did for James and Janet, and Angie, and those testimonials. Signs follow the believer. So you don't follow signs, psychics, divination, numerology, horoscopes, palm readers. That's witchcraft. That's all Satan's side. No, the believer follows the word and the word comes up. This word comes up. It's seed. It comes up. It produces a harvest if you keep doing it. It's a word for someone. This word on vowing is going to come up in your life. It's just going to, you can't stop it. I'm not talking about feeling like doing it. I'm talking about doing it. There's a, I'm, there's a person watching me. You're sitting there in a chair. The newspaper's laying on the floor. You're looking at some ads the other day, and you've never really done anything for God. You've been real chinchy in your giving. I'm telling you, when this life is over, what we did for God is the only thing that's going to last. And God wants to bless you to be a blessing. He wants to bless you to be a blessing. Just make the vow. Maybe you don't have it. I don't know. Maybe you need to send it in today. There is a person that needs to pay on their vow today before the devil talks you out. If that seed's going to come up and produce some kind of a harvest. Here is Cheryl from Detroit. You folks up in Detroit, God bless you. $500 vow of faith and for children, seeding into lives of children. Here's Carol, a $1,000 vow of faith. Here's Wesley from Detroit, $100. Here's 50 from Nellie. Here's another 1,000 from Cynthia. Here's Chula Vista, California. Been there. Used to live in um, San Diego. Amen. From Chula Vista, California, right across the border from Tijuana. Chula Vista, $1,000 vow of faith. Just got a few moments. How much time do we have left? There's two minutes. There's something about calling before we go off the air today and give the devil a black eye. He's backed you in a corner with bills piled up. Start worshiping God. Seek first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness, and all those things you need will be added to you. Now, quickly, get to your phone. Two minutes, quickly. Here's Sandra from Inglewood, California, $1,000 vow of faith. Here's Linda from Redondo Beach, been there. $1,000 vow of faith. Brenda from another Brenda, Brenda, Brenda. That was Linda from Redondo. This is Brenda from Redford, Michigan. Hadn't been there. <laughs> $1,000 vow of faith. Here's Doris, $100 vow of faith. Here's Michelle, $1,000 vow of faith. Here's Shinequa from Detroit, $1,000 vow of faith. Here's Lenore from Tampa. Another $1,000 vow of faith. These are people that are calling, entering into a covenant with God. God's watching over this word to perform it. Thank you, Jesus. And it's a breakthrough, a real breakthrough for someone. It's going to bring a break for your faith. It shakes, it gets your faith out there to break through. And then God said, he rebukes the devourer. Got one minute before we go out there. He rebukes the devourer. Don't miss the Lord when... You know, I'm not sent to everyone, no doubt about it. But there's a person watching me. I am sent to you today to break that curse of lack, that poverty spirit off of you. And bring, I hear this, these are people that heard the sound of abundance. Now, I'll send you a return letter envelope. 
and just begin to worship God with whatever God begins to bless you with. Just send a portion of it to the work of God and the hot soil of the kingdom of God through this ministry. Amen. Well, good things are happening, and um, I'm excited about the future creating Using faith and the Word to create, like a seed, it creates. Faith like a seed, it creates your dimension and your future. I've got to go. Let me hear from you today. This is your friend, Pastor Robert Tilton, reaching out to you. You've been watching Success in Life with Robert Tilton. It's our prayer that this program has been an inspiration and blessing to you. Remember, phone ministers are standing by waiting for your call 24 hours a day. Or write to Robert Tilton, Post Office Box 22066, Tulsa, Oklahoma, 74121-2066. On behalf of everyone at Success in Life, be encouraged and God bless you. that she was at the end of her means and she didn't know what to do but God oh hallelujah but God sent a prophet to that woman one that was able to see beyond the present circumstances and knew what could be one word from that prophet changed her life released a miracle to begin to operate and what looked like the end was just the beginning of a supernatural flow and move of God in her life. If you know someone in that kind of situation, stay tuned because God has a word for you. Success in Life with Robert Tilton. from God, one word spoken in faith, one creative miracle. That's what the Apostle Paul called the word of faith which we preach. Remember in Romans 10, it says we don't have to bring him down from heaven. We don't have to raise, speaking of Jesus, from the dead. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. And I preach the word of faith. Through faith, we understand the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that the things that are seen are not made by things that do appear. Just a couple of days ago, the daily Bible reading, where God said in the book of Isaiah, Open thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. So many times we don't understand how it all operates. Koda Bashata. And many of God's people are perishing because of lack of knowledge. But once truth comes and you understand it, it sets you free. It sets you free from poverty. It sets you free from guilt and condemnation. Just then I saw a person. You've made some mistakes and you've lived with that guilt for years. And I'll tell you something, it's destroying you physically and emotionally. But one word today from God is going to set you free. Today, I'm going to be ministering along the lines of power to create or to get wealth. You see, in these last days, just as there are divine healing ministries, there will also be divine prosperity ministries because the example was set up when God delivered the children of Israel, Jacob, from Egyptian bondages and Egyptian diseases. It says, He led them forth with silver and gold, and there was not one feeble person among them. Every born-again believer should want and desire to prosper so that they can be a bigger blessing into the kingdom of God. God told Abraham, Abraham, I'm going to bless you so you can be a blessing. Can you imagine? God wants to bless you so you can be a blessing. Maybe you're like that woman. You're at the end of your means. Maybe you've given up. Don't give up because the best is yet to come. And faith in what God said releases it to begin to work in your life. Well, we've got a big hour ahead for you. If you know someone who has some tremendous needs in their life, get on that telephone and call them up right now and say, Bob is back. 
off. Go ahead and do that. In fact, Bo Williams is going to come and minister in song right now, and I want you just to get in the spirit and worship God. Now listen closely. While Bo is singing, the anointing of God, it says, when the minstrels played, the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah, and he began to prophesy. And I believe the hand of God's going to come upon me, and we're going to call things which be not as though they were. We're going to speak things into existence in your life. If I can just get your mouth open, like Jesus told Peter what to do to pay his taxes, hello, taxpayers out there, if we could just learn how to get our mouth open and begin to speak that word of faith. So many times we talk doubt, poverty, lack, fear, but today we're going to talk faith. Are you ready? Now here's Bo singing wonderful. Watch this. To get our partners blessed enough to pay the ministry's television bills. And I went away for eight days of prayer and fasting, and during that time, God began to speak to me, and I began to read through the Bible as if I'd never read it before. And one day as I was reading, literally, the Bible just opened up in front of me, and as I began to read where the brook had dried up for Elijah, I began to relate to that, not just relating in a, in a casual way, but it's like I went into that particular chapter and I knew what it was like for the brook to dry up. And then God gave Elijah a word and told him where to go so that his brook wouldn't be dried up anymore. But when he got to Zarephath, there was a woman there who had literally given up on life. In fact, she and her son were gathering sticks to make their last meal, and they were going to eat it and then die. They had given up, but God sent that prophet there and God told, oh, this is a good word for someone, this, just then, gifts of the Holy Spirit, I knew, it's like I knew that someone had been sent by God in front of this television set today. God sent that prophet to that woman that day, the same way I just saw just then, God has sent me to someone that's watching right now to speak a word into your life. You need a word from God. I am certainly not God. But my faith in God brings God's word alive into the hearts of anyone that will decide to be a believer. And God sent prophet Elijah to that woman, and he said that he had put it in her heart to feed the prophet of God. But Elijah, when he got there, that woman had nothing. But Elijah had a lot. He knew, he told her the first thing, get out of fear, quit worrying about how you're going to make it. You're going to make it. You're going to make it, not with your natural strength and means, but you're going to make it through the word of the Lord. And Elijah told her what to do. She had to let go in order to be able to receive. She had to prime the pump. And he said to her, give me something to drink. It was a famine. Then he said, fix me something to eat. And she said, I don't have anything. What are you talking about, preacher? I don't have anything. You're telling me in time of famine and drought to give you something to drink, some water, and you actually have the audacity to ask me to give you something to eat when I'm eating my last meal? But the prophet was able to see beyond her circumstance. That's faith. Faith calls things which be not as though they were. And he said to her, fear not. The woman was talking fear. Fear had gripped her mind, her thoughts, her heart, her life, her supply. But God knew what the word was. God told Elijah, that woman is going to sustain you. And as she sustains God's work, she and her son are going to eat even in time of famine. When I saw that years ago, I went, Phew, that's it. God's not sending me to people that's got it, that don't have any problems or needs, but God is sending me to people who have problems and needs. And if I will dare to have faith, if I will dare to say, but my God will supply all of your need according to his riches and glory through the power of Jesus Christ. How to release 
are, as Jesus said it, loose what has been bound. Your supply has been bound. But the word of the Lord says it can be loosed. And Elijah said, Fear not. Go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first before you walk out that door today, before you do another thing in the house. First, things first. But first, bring me unto me, and after me, bring me, make me thereof a little cake first, and bring unto me, and after, afterwards, because this is the miracle, See, she was making a miracle. And after, make for thee and for thy son, for thus saith the Lord God of Israel. See, he was, he was preaching the promises. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall your cruise of oil fail until the day the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. See, she believed. She got out of fear and got into faith. What got her into faith? She believed what the word of the Lord was. She believed what God said. And she did it. She just didn't believe it. But she did it. So many times we get rocked to sleep in church. We, we call ourselves a believer, but we've been fooling ourselves. We have never really been a doer acting in faith. When she went and did according to the saying, thus, okay, and she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her house did it many days, and the, cru the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail according to the word of the Lord, which God spoke by Elijah. Elijah preached prosperity and abundance to that woman because God had put it in his heart that God would supply. Mike was going through a similar situation, but he heard me preaching, it's not the end. It can be the beginning if you want it to. Here's Mike's story. Watch this. The rainy, dreary day was a perfect reflection of Mike's innermost feelings. After a long bout with the financial world, Mike came out the loser. Now he was without a job, food was scarce, and he was months behind on bills. Uh, everything was going to be shut off, all the utilities. We got all the final notices. And in that situation, a man normally feels like they have to work. And the longer you think about it, and the more worthless you feel, then you have these suicidal tendencies. Depression hit so hard, not even Mike's relationship with God or the love of his wife and son were enough to pull him out. Although we prayed, and we prayed together as a family, our eyes were not on God. They were on the circumstances. And the circumstances start to overwhelm you after a while. The circumstances became so bad, in fact, Mike and Lori were forced out of their apartment and ended up renting a rundown motel room for several months before finding another apartment they could afford. Well, I was out of work two, for two months, and all the bills were backed up. Now, my wife was gone. I was sitting there in the house alone, and I turned the TV on, and my brother Tilton was on. Mike had watched Success in Life before with little interest but today would be much different. It's like there's an anointing to heal a person this very moment to heal them. They've had, they, they've had like a sickness of poverty. My mind just seemed like it was totally blank, and my heart was listening to it. My mind wasn't even involved in that. And uh, I had $7 in my pocket, $7 to our entire name. And I said, and tears came into my eyes when I was watching him, and I felt a relief to give to make a vow. With tears still welled up in his eyes, Mike stuffed the envelope with his last remaining dollar, not yet realizing by his actions he had stepped out of the natural realm of lack and into the supernatural realm of God's abundance. I sent that $7 in as fast as I could do it. And for an entire month, every single day, someone came to this house and either brought us food or brought us money. Every single day. And God showed me a picture of when God fed Elijah by the ravens. And that just set me free. Soon after, God miraculously opened the door for Mike to start a job at a department store. And one afternoon when on the job, Mike was interrupted by his wife, 
who ecstatically shoved a piece of paper in front of him. And she said, you have to look at this. Well, I didn't know, you know anything about all the commotion that went on on the porch on the, between her and his sister when they was jumping up and down and slapping each other in the back when they saw that check. And my wife showed me that check, and it was for $19,000. If there is such a term, this was more than a miracle for Mike. Now, he was expecting a profit-sharing check from his former employer, but nowhere near the amount he received. Mike says he knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that this check was a direct result of his vow, and miracles were beginning to happen because of his faith. And then a month later, a check came in the mail for $6,000. So basically, it was, it was close to $27,000 that we got from making a vow to God for $1,000, and we got $27,000 in return by believing God. By, by knowing, by not being swayed. Off to the bank they went, and immediately after, every bill was paid down to the last dollar, and good credit was reestablished. And for the first time in their lives, Mike and Lori bought a brand new car. Mike calls vowing a commitment that pays. And with that vowing, uh, you're committed. You're committed. And uh, uh, it's, I expect it to happen. It's just a fact of getting us to move to getting us to step that first, you know, and that, 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 that first step, you know, and then the God will lift us up on all the rest of them. You know, our feet will never touch the ground after that. Today, even the rainiest of days can storm on Mike and Lori's happiness because they know when they make a vow and stand in faith, they're living every day under the sun. Like you talked about the little widow. She gave the last of the oil and the last of the, of the flour. We gave the last of the $7, you know, not knowing if we're going to have food tomorrow or not. And every single day, he supplied our needs. Reporting for Success in Life from Bristol, Connecticut, I'm Paul Petit. The woman in the Bible believed the word of the Lord that Elijah spoke in faith. Mike believed the word of the Lord that Bob spoke in faith. See? Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. How can they hear it except that somebody preach it? And a preacher must preach it in faith. Sometimes preachers preach things they don't even believe themselves. I believe this. I practice this. I have practiced the Word of God along these lines for years. And it's absolutely amazing. God, Luke 6, 38, He said, If we would give, it would be given back. How? Pressed down, shaking together, running over. Don't just throw your offering in the plate. When you, when you give, when you tithe, when you give offerings, when you pay on your vow, do it as an act of faith and expect a harvest. Why? So that you can be a bigger giver and a bigger blessing. Mike broke that sickness, that curse of lack off of his life. See, in the spirit world, there's devils. There's principalities and powers. Those are fallen angels that rebelled against God. Then there's also good angels, angels that have not left their first estate. They have not been disobedient. They have not gotten into sin. And the, the, the bad angels, when we are not in faith, they steal, kill, and destroy from us. Caterpillar, canker, canker worm, and palmer worm. But God said in the last days He was going to restore what those principalities and powers had eaten away. Hello. And God releases the angels to begin to go out there and to cause, give you faith. It says, and God would cause men to give in to your bosom. God begins to round up the wealth of the sinner to come into the hands of the righteous. I am here today with the anointing of God to preach the gospel to the poor, those that are in areas of lack of something in their life. And here's how to get into faith. God said, if I were hungry, would I not tell thee? For the world is mine in the fullness thereof. 14th verse, offer unto God thanksgiving. If you'll do this, thanksgiving. Pay thy vows unto the Most High and call upon me in the day of your troubles. <laughs> I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. Now, I'm going to let you in on a little secret, something you don't know that I know. When I come on the air like this, it's, it still amazes my natural mind how the anointing of God begins to flow out of me 
And faith, I, I, faith gives you the ability to see beyond what is. And as I sit here looking at this camera, I don't see the camera. I see someone watching me. And the little secret is, I know that I know that I know you're there. And that God has placed you in front of this television set right now so that you will not be perishing nor destroyed because of lack of knowledge. And he has sent me the same way he sent Elijah to break that curse of lack off of you. It's called the vow of faith. Jacob, he had nothing. But he was a covenant child. Jacob's grandfather, Abraham, had received a blessing from God. But Ab Jacob had nothing. Same situation many of you are in right now. Nothing. But God chose the poor of this world to be rich in faith. A little bit of, Jesus said, if you will just have faith like a seed. And that's what the vow of Vow in faith, vowing in faith. This vow. See, Psalm 76, vow and pay unto the Lord your God. Let all that be round about him bring presents unto him that ought to be feared. And he shall cut off the spirit of the princes, those principalities and powers, those worms that have been eating your blessings and your harvest. Now, here's what we're going to do. A, I want you to make a vow in faith. In faith, believing simply according to 2 Corinthians 9, 10, and God who provides seed for the sower and bread for eating will also provide, God will provide, right there it is, and multiply your resources for sowing and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Now listen closely. First of all, there is no such thing as lack. It's a lie. Okay. Secondly, I have got to get you beyond where you are right now in the natural realm and circumstances. And doing, if I can get you to make a vow in faith, believing that God will provide you seed to sow and bread to eat, and he will multiply your seed sown. You saw what, how... What God did for Mike, when Mike stepped out of where he was, he literally stepped into, scripturally, God circled him with blessings. And men began to give into his bosom. Now, I'm going to tell you something else. I am not sent to everyone, like Elijah was not sent to everyone. But there are particular people... Because I went through my brook drying up thing, and God said, I'm going to tell you now, you're going to have to go preach prosperity, preacher, to those who need healing in the area of their finances, who can't seem to break out of that. Uh, Jesus said, are you listening to me, sister, brother? Jesus said these words. If you'll listen, I can teach you something that will change and your life and revolution. Jesus said, according to your faith, so be it unto thee. Through faith, we understand God's world was framed by the, the size of the world you live in is determined by the, the, the level of your faith, which is simply the level of your understanding. And then the application of what you learn. If you will believe what I am telling you today, and I'll just be real frank with you, as a prophet of God, I am anointed powerfully in this area to release finances, provision into your life and to break those devils of hell that have been stealing from you. And I'll tell you something else I know about someone watching me right now. There's two people. First, there's a person watching me that goes to church and you, and you have never believed this, and I'll tell you why, because your preacher hadn't preached it. He may have preached salvation, the forgiveness of your sins, and thank God for that. That is the most powerful miracle there is, and I do that, frankly. Number two, he may preach healing, but you need to have someone to preach prosperity to you because you've almost given up on breaking out of that lack. I know it. The devil hates this message more than any message preached because he knows 
when, when, when a believer begins to tithe and give offerings and pay on their vow, God rebukes him, makes him let go of what he's been stealing their harvest before the time in the field, and he knows that they're going to contribute into the preaching of the gospel around the world and more souls are going to be saved and come to the kingdom. The devil wants you broke and poor. He doesn't want you to have anything. He doesn't want you to be an example that God is a, a my God is a good provider. I talked to a person the other day. They said they didn't like to go shopping because they didn't have any money. Pitiful. That's perishing because of lack of knowledge. God opened my eyes to this vow of faith. Vowing, I read the scriptures to you. Jacob, when he had nothing, God opened his eyes to God's abundance. And Jacob said, if you'll be my God. And it says, and Jacob vowed a vow, saying, saying, you can't just sit there and not open your mouth. Saying, Jacob vowed a vow, saying, oh, so powerful. God will be with me, keep me, protect me, provide for me, bless me. He'll be my God. And that was Jacob's breakthrough. Honor the, to honor the Lord with thy substance, the first fruits of all of thine increase, and so shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. Honoring the Lord. Right now, several of my prayer ministers are standing by in our prayer center, phone center. You whom God has sent me, not, not any of the other of you, but those that God has put you in touch, it's God's talking to you. This is your answer to your breakthrough in prayers. Troubles? Had a tough time with a better place to live? Maybe new transportation? Make a vow of faith. Maybe make a vow. It's a promise. It's a covenant with God. Make it for $1,000. Preacher, you just are so bold. You talk so big. Psalms 45, 1, my mouth is a pen of a ready writer. When you get that revelation, why a thousand? Because it gets your attention. Mm -hmm. It gets your attention. And if it's not faith, it doesn't move God. Cain and Abel both gave, two givers. But he honored one's gift and the other one he rejected. In Hebrews 11, it says because Abel gave in faith. And God honors what takes faith. And faith is when you do something beyond your feelings or your emotions or your senses. Now listen to me. There's a person, I'm sure several, but there's at least one person right now that I'm, you and I are eyeball to eyeball, heart to heart, spirit to spirit. If you'll make that $1,000 vow, and as God provides the seed, just honor him with a portion First fruits, a portion of every time God begins to bless you, just simply pay on your vow. Maybe weekly, maybe monthly, it may take a year, even more. But just be for every one of you can make that vow of faith for $1,000 right now. Open your mouth. I want you to call and open your mouth and say to my prayer minister, which they'll bring me your vow right here, lay it on my Bible. And this anointing of prosperity, it's an anointing the same way there's an anointing to heal sick. There is an anointing to prophesy and bring healing in the area of your finances so that your family can have the things they need. Right now, I want you to go to your phone. If you're that person and God's bearing witness that you're the one that he has commanded or has put it in your heart, if you will act on this word, I mean act on it, as they went, they were healed. Remember, as they acted, Jesus saw their faith. He said, your faith hath made thee whole. It'll heal that checkbook. It'll heal that credit report. It will break that charge card dead off of you. If you're that person, quickly call me right now. Makes no difference what time of the night, in the morning, the middle of the day, it is. This is a word that I have spoken by the, by the faith and the authority of Jesus Christ, every one of you, if you will believe this word that I have preached, I gave you chapter, I read it to you. If you'll believe it and act on it right now by making that vow in faith that God, here it is, you're making a vow for $1,000. And that gets your attention. That'll get you into expectancy. Maybe it's 500 I don't know. Maybe you want to do $100 a month. 
or $50 a week or as God, but listen closely. Every one of you that will believe this word right now and stay in faith. And some of you are going to start with a little bit of faith. You don't have much faith right now, but if you'll just start with that little bit of faith you have and keep watering and paying on your vow, I'll begin to send you some envelopes and ministry letters to increase your faith. If you'll act on that word this moment, right now, not tomorrow, not later, but right now and make the vow of faith. In faith that God is a provider. You're saying, God, you're my provider. You are my provider. You are my provider. And I am making this vow in faith that you are a provider. I am like Abraham. I am willing to give out of my need, to give out of my want, that I am not going to eat my seed. I'm not going to steal the tithe and offerings. I am not going to rob you. I am going to worship you. I am going to acknowledge you through my giving right now. Ooh, hallelujah. Every time you tithe, every time you give, you are saying, you're saying to the devil, devil, God's my provider, and you're not going to steal my, my harvest, and, you're, and I'm, you're not going to talk me into eating my seed, my tithe. You know what happened when Jacob did that, made that vow to God? Huh. God gave him a dream, a revelation on how to prosper. And he began to be one of the richest cattlemen there ever was. His flocks grew faster and larger than his father-in-law. Hello. Because he entered into that covenant with God. Every day we're seeing amazing results. And I'll tell you something else. God commissioned me to preach this to break the curse off of you. This word will break the curse of lack and poverty off of you and your home. There's a woman watching needs to call right now. You're sitting there. Spirit of God's all over you. What are you saying, preach? I'm saying when you make that vow in faith that God, as, as God provides the seed, that's all I'm saying. You make the vow. You open your mouth. What are you vowing for? Job 22 says, Job 22 says, Acquaint now thyself with him, and be at peace, whereby good shall come unto thee. For it says, thou, Yea, the Almighty shall be thy defense, and thou shalt have plenty of silver. For then shalt thou have thy delight in the Almighty, and lift up thy face to God. Thou shalt make thy prayer unto him. He shall hear thee, and, the, and thou shalt pay thy vows. Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it will be established unto thee, and the light of God's favor will shine on your path. Then when men are cast down, they will say there is lifting up. Mike believed the prophetic word. Preacher, you need to do this out of your church. You do. There's also a business person that needs to make a $5,000 vow of faith. There's another one that needs to make $1,000 a month and pay it out of your payroll. You've had such a hard time. But this, when the devil backs you in a corner, that's when you've got to come out fighting with your faith in the sword of the Spirit. It gives, I mean, it breaks the power of hell. Those devils that have been stealing your harvest, if you will call, and I know you're there. I mean, I know. I know. I, I, there is a person watching me. You don't even go to church. But you love God. You believe in God. In fact, there's another person. You're out of church. You need to do that. You need to get back tithing and giving offerings. When you call, you're opening your... If I can, Peter, Jesus told Peter, open the fish's mouth. There was money in the fish's mouth. The prophet, if he had not preached this, his ministry would not continued. God has called this ministry to evangelize the world. I have an international anointing. I am a, 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 an evangelist soul winner. I'm called, spoken to, ought to be by God to be a fisher of men. I am. I know that I know. And God's opening effectual doors in this ministry. There's a person watching me. If you will act on this word, it says, when the woman believed the word of the Lord that God spoke by Elijah. It broke that curse of lack off of her. Oh, broke the curse of lack off of her. In fact, I'm going to have Bo Williams come again in just a moment and sing. There's a person watching me, and I feel this very strong. If you will believe this word in the day of your trouble, Thou shalt make thy prayer to him, and he shall deliver thee. Make thy vow. It's a thanksgiving offering. There's also a person that I prayed for several times. You need to worship God right now today for your giving. I want you to call 
right now. I'm, this is probably the strongest I've felt this for a $1,000 vow of faith. You say, Bob, my faith is, I ha it, 500 is faith for me. That's it. Maybe 100 is faith for you, $100. It's a vowing in faith that God is Jehovah Jireh provider. Okay, and then every week or every month as God begins to bless you and prosper you, put that water, that seed. Every time you, you do that, you're giving the devil a black eye because it says in Malachi 3 that God personally rebukes the devourer. And your act of faith is loosing those finances to come into your life. Right now, there's a per... Uh, uh, thank you, Lord. There's a person that's never made a vow, a, a, a promise, a pledge to God through the hot soil of this ministry because this anointing is here. Now, if you want to do it to your church, that's fine. You go to your pastor, though, and you tell him you make a vow of faith to your church. And you pay it. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. But many of you right now don't have a place to sow, and this soil is hot. Every day you see the souls that are coming to the kingdom of heaven through this ministry, the miracles that are happening because of the faith in Jesus' name. There's a person watching me that needs to do $100 a week right now. God's, there's also a person that's something like $82 a week or something. You're making $800 or something a week you need to call. There's also a person watching needs to make a $10,000 vow of faith, and you need to do it. There's a person watching me, a, a fairly strong, and you, 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 you've, frankly, you've never really given much to church. You love God, but you've never, you've been, you, you have not been a tither and you have not been a giver. You need to call and make that vow right now. Bo Williams is going to come and sing, and is well with my soul. And while Bo is singing, don't sit there, because you're going to be sitting in that same boat, that same chair, that's laying on that same bed this time next year, unless you do something. Just then I, had a, a, I saw a person. You don't go to church. You're looking at me, and you're actually even kind of snickering. <laughs> but I tell you what, the devil is stealing this word out of your mind because of unbelief. I'm giving you the word of God, and if you'll believe it, God's going to bring a miracle breakthrough into your life, and you're not going to walk around having given up on life like you have been. Now, here's Bo, and while Bo is singing, quickly go to your phone and call. In fact, here are several people that are already, Patricia has called up in New York, a one-time $100 gift. Here's Marie calling in, $30 a month. Here's Oscar calling in, $20. Here's a $250 a month. Here's a th another $1,000 vow of faith. People are making vows of faith and miracles are happening in their life. Here's Willie, Los Angeles. God bless you, Willie. God bless you. Now quickly, go to your phone while Bo is singing and act on that word and get your mouth open and tell God what you want and give the devil a black eye. Now here's Bo singing it as well. With the word of faith. Just a few minutes now before we go off the air. And I know that I know God puts you in front of this today for your breakthrough to break out poverty and debt. Psalms 45, 1 says, Your mouth is a pen of a ready writer. I want you to call and open your mouth wide. To my prayer minister, what you're believing God for and offer a thanksgiving gift of faith. I'm challenging everyone today to make a $1,000, a millennium vow, a $1,000 vow in faith as God provides the seed. That's all I'm saying. Because I know God will. If you won't eat it, if you won't eat your tithe and offerings and pay on your vow and get into that rhythm of seed time and harvest, God, some sow, some water, God gives the increase. You've been robbing God because you've been withholding tithes and offerings. And God said in Malachi, you're cursed with a curse because you've robbed God of his portion. Just a few days ago, remember Achan? God sent Joshua and the children of Israel to fight against the city of Ai and told them as they went there not to, he said, all the silver and the gold belongs to him, but one that buried it in his tent brought a curse upon his household. They found the one, and he was kicked out, actually he was killed. But then, then God said, now, Joshua, go after Ai. Now that you've given me my portion, go after that city and everything you take is yours and divide it up the spoils with the strong. <laughs> God always divides the spoil with the strong. Psalms, uh, Isaiah 53, 12, and he divideth, Jesus divideth the spoils with the strong. That's your word. Don't bury God's portion. Give honor God with his portion. And you've been, you've been, you've been, 
doing that. So don't faint now. Don't be weary and well-doing. And then, but if you have been stealing from God, robbing from God, eating your tithe, eating your seed, you, you, if, if Achan had not had stolen what was God, God was about to bless him. God was about to bless him. Give God first his portion. Then he gives you the spiritual strength and authority to go after your portion. Give God his seed. If you'll make a thousand dollar vow of faith right now, don't sit there another moment, but quickly go to your phone and make a thousand dollar vow of faith or 500 or 100, whatever takes faith. There's still that person needs to be making a thousand dollar a month vow in faith as God provides the seed. That's all I'm saying, as God provides the seed, because I know he will. If I can get you into faith, it'll break that lack off of you. There's a woman sitting on the edge of her bed, got a newspaper next to you. God sent me to you today. There's also a businessman flipping through the TV there in his office. Sir, you make God your partner, your provider. When you make the vow, you're making it in faith, that God, in the faith that God is Jehovah Jireh, provi your provider. When Jacob did that, he had nothing. Look how he ended up, Israel, 12 sons, multitudes, prosperity. Why do you think the Jewish people believe in prosperity so much? Because they read the Bible. It's throughout the whole Bible. They know it's God's will for them to prosper, hello, and possess the land. Oh, <laughs> and they are doing it. And thank God for it, because they understand the blessings of Abraham. But my Bible tells me, those are my Jewish friends out there, and I have quite a few. Galatians 3.13 says, Christ redeemed me from the curse of poverty of the law, so that the blessing of Abraham would come upon me as a Gentile, because I chose not to be a heathen unbeliever. I chose to be a believer. Amen. Hallelujah. Honor the Lord with the first fruits. The, Paul said the first of each week as God hath prospered you. You've got to make a decision that it's God's will for you to prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers spiritually. That's in the Bible. That's 3 John 2. That covenant of faith. You're entering into a covenant with God as a provider. And you're just saying, God, as you provide... I will worship you through my tithes and offerings. I will not bury it in my tent. I will not use it for unclean use. I will not give it to the dead, Deuteronomy 26. But I will worship you this day, and I will not forget, Deuteronomy 8, 18, as you bring me to possessing houses that I didn't build, wearing clothes that I didn't earn and didn't deserve, that I won't forget that you were the one that gave me power to get wealth to establish your covenant that you swore to Abraham. What's God doing? God's blessing you not because of you. He's blessing you because of what he promised Abraham. In other words, God fulfills his vow. God fulfills his promise that he promised Abraham by blessing Abraham's descendants. Do you you got to you got to step into this. You got to use your faith and step into it. Now, if you believe this word spoken by me in Jesus's name and stay in faith, and don't let the devil steal this word from you. Don't get offended by this word. But stay in faith. Don't trust in your riches. Most of the time, when you hold on to something, when you should be giving it, and God's portion is God's portion. That's a tenth. Uh, don't eat the seed. Don't steal from God. Don't get offended. Don't get out of faith. Stay in faith. Over the years, God will begin to reward you. Months, years. You know, some just like losing weight. Some, we didn't gain the weight overnight, and we're not going to lose it overnight. But as we begin to do what's right, there's a person watching who needs to make a $500 vow of faith. There's three people that God's talking to right now. I want you to quickly go to the phone and call me. It, no matter what time of the day it is, maybe it's the middle of the night, can't sleep, troubled over pr uh, problems. Maybe you're watching us in New York City somewhere, Los Angeles, I don't know. Maybe it's your live right now during this live broadcast. It makes no difference. You decide if you're a believer and then be a doer. It says the woman believed the word of the Lord that God spoke through Elijah, and she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. She went and did it. I've given you chapter and verse, verses. Write them down. Psalms 50, verses uh, uh, 13 and 14 and 15. Psalm 76, uh, verse 11. David said, I went through the fire and I went through the waters, but thou brought me out into a wealthy place, and I will pay my vows which my lips have uttered and my mouth has spoken when I was in trouble. <laughs> when I was in trouble, Psalm 66. 
uh, Job 22. Even in the New Testament, it talks about Paul and some of the disciples making, making a vow and going to Jerusalem to pay their vows. It's amazing. Now quickly, go to your phone. Here is uh, Michael from Covina, California. Here's Lily from Detroit, Michigan, a $100 vow of faith. Here's Jim from San Clemente, California. My sister lives in San Clemente, a $1,000 vow of faith. Here's Judy from Franklin, Tennessee, up there in the Nashville area, a $1,000 vow of faith. Here's Ron making a $1,000 vow of faith from Los Angeles. God bless you, Ron. We're going to be partners together. We're making friends with our money. Our money is not our enemy. It says, make friends with your unrighteous mammon, so when your life shall fail and you, we are received into that everlasting habitation, there will be people there that have come to Christ because you gave out of your need so that they could receive and hear the gospel so there would be meat in God's house and it's going to come back into your life. Here's Cynthia, $25 a month. Here's Alicia from Detroit, $100 a month. Here's Joyce, $1,000. Here's Daniel, a $5,000, a vow of faith. Daniel in Atlanta, God bless you, Daniel. We're going to be partners together. I'm going to, con I'm going to begin to write you and minister to you through the mail and build your faith. And I've got a new book I'm fixing to send many of you. And uh, I tell you, God's, God's blessings are working if you'll work the promises. If I can just get your mouth open, wide. Some people have mealy mouth. They talk a little. It's the, in Proverbs it says, with the increase of thy lips shall thou belly, belly be satisfied. There's a person watching me. You need to expand your business. You need to expand your business. You need to get ready to stretch. You need to make a vow of faith and stretch forth the curtain of your habitations because God's about to expand you. There's also a person, you're in fear. You're sitting here, well, I don't know, I don't know, that's just another one of those preachers on television getting money. No, I'm not. This is a word to preach that God gave me, and I am not being disobedient to the heavenly vision. I had Satan himself infuriated walked into my bedroom. It's a bad place for the devil to come. He goes in the bedrooms a lot. But he walked into my bedroom and he had come personally to stop me from preaching this because he said, every time one of you paid on your vow, tithed and gave offerings, he said God rebuked him and things that he had stolen from God's people, he was having prayers that he was keeping from being answered because they were not tithing. See, he does not want you to tithe. He does not want you to make vows. He does not want you to give out of your need because he wants to keep you in fear backed into a corner. When you make that vow in faith that as God provides the seed, you're breaking that spirit of fear off of you by doing what takes faith. Now quickly, we've got one minute before we go off here. Quickly, don't sit there another second. When those four lepers said, why sit we here till we die? When they went forward, the enemy that had been stealing from Samaria fled. God caused the enemy, God rebuked the enemy and caused them to flee. Amen? I'm going to begin to pray over your vows of faith. Father, I believe with all of my heart that you gave me personally this message to break the spirit of lack and trouble and problems off of your people. Father, I believe that you're Jehovah Jireh. You are a provider. And even as Abraham was willing to offer up Isaac, God, he knew you would provide a realm, and you provided, but as he acted in obedience to give, then God, you gave him the seed to sow. Thank you, Father. Touch these people. Touch their minds, inspired ideas. Touch their hands to bless the work of their hands. Uh, direct their steps, God, to bless the work, the, the, their steps of their feet where they go. Cut up. There's a person who needs to make a vow for a new home. Just then, I just saw that. God's going to bring that home into you. I've got to go. Need to hear from you today. I love you. And don't give up because the best is yet to come and your faith is what makes it possible. Amen. You've been watching Success in Life with... This is a great day today. This is the day the Lord hath made and we are going to rejoice and be glad in it. Now listen closely. I've got something for you today. I have something for you. Now it's not money, but I've got something even more powerful. In fact, I've got something money cannot buy. Peter said to a man that was basically down on his luck, he couldn't get up and walk. He had to be carried around by his friends. He was sick. He was broke. He didn't know what to do but to beg. He was just a beggar. And you know something? 
Peter looked at that man and said, Silver and gold have we none, but we've got something to give you, and that's the use of the name of Jesus. And today, I am going to pray in the power and the authority of the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And every knee is going to have to bow. Every sickness, get ready. Poverty, everything is going to have to bow to the name of Jesus. Now listen closely. Coming up today, we have some incredible things to share with you. We've got witnesses and documented proof, evidence, that Jesus is performing supernatural miracles for those who will focus their faith upon him. Get ready. We've sent teams all across the United States to bring back these amazing true life testimonials of people that have received answers through prayer through the use of the name of Jesus. We're going to also show you how this ministry is fulfilling God's great commission through our Jerusalem World Prayer Center, which is in Israel. The music ministry of Candy Staten and much, much more on today's broadcast. Now listen closely. Right now, the touching story of a man's emotional and physical scars were miraculously healed. One day, as he watched this program, are you ready? Watch this. I wanted to die. More pain than anybody could imagine. Tommy served 11 months in combat duty in Vietnam, but just three weeks before he was to return home, his exhausting and unforgettable tour of duty ended abruptly when he stepped on a landmine. Immediately you smell your flesh burning. I didn't know, I knew what had happened to me. I didn't know how bad I was hurt. Broke both of my legs. I remember grabbing a bamboo tree with my right hand. I couldn't hold on to it and I just started sliding down it. I just crumbled to the ground and my legs just crumbled under me. The war was over for Tommy. With broken legs and extensive nerve damage to his body, he was discharged from the Army with honors. However, his personal battle with pain was just beginning. Pain was so terrible, it was unreal. I, they, I went through about three different operations on my legs. I'm still taking shrapnel out, and they leave all the wounds open, and it's... It's very humiliating, too. Very humiliating. You depend on somebody else for You're just like a baby. Can't even go to the bathroom. Can't get you anything to drink, eat. And I just want, I wanted to die. Tommy's only desire for living came in periodic doses of morphine and Demerol. I was addicted to drugs way before I ever came out of the hospital. I had to have them. I, I couldn't live without them. Tommy left the hospital with prescription drugs readily at his disposal, but he resorted to street drugs for quick relief. For some reason, the drugs that I've done in the hospital, it made it easier for me to do the drugs that were out here. I could do them and, and still kind of act and lead a normal kind of life. Even when I went to work, I had to be on drugs just to get up and go to work. I could, there was so much pain involved. And it, it stayed that way, it stayed that way all my life. Uh, I didn't. I thought I was going to be on drugs the rest of my entire life. In the wee hours of the morning, Tommy's desperation for drugs was matched by his increasing need for direction. That's when he found Robert Tilton Ministries. He related to me what the Word of God says. I had to accept Jesus Christ as my Savior. He got me to realize what the Word was saying to me. I did not understand it till I heard him say it. I got a friend, I put my hand on the screen when he said to do it. I gave my life to the Lord. And I gave my whole life. I gave him all my addictions, all my problems, all my pain, all my friends, all my family. I gave him my dog, my house, my car, everything, especially my finances. Tommy's willingness to lay down his life for Jesus Christ was met by God's mercy in deliverance from the chains that held him bound. I laid down the cigarettes first, and then the pain went out of my life, and then the drugs went out of my life. He's taken away all my addictions, all my pain. Just, he reconstructed my whole life. And this, to me, is a better feeling 
than it would have been to win the Vietnam War and come back without any wounds whatsoever. To have this, if I could have had Vietnam War and win it and come back without any wounds and not have God, I wouldn't want it. I, I'd have to have this. I'd take this above anything I've ever experienced. Tommy will always remember his buddies who never came home from Vietnam. As for him, he is thankful he is a survivor because now he knows Jesus. I used to be a physically a mental cripple in the United States Army. I was a soldier in the United States Army that way. And now I'm an on fire, healed soldier in the Army of God. With a testimony of faith from Fort Worth, Texas, I'm Ted Warren for Success in Life. The name of Jesus. It's a name above every name that is named. There's power and authority, all power. Jesus said all power in heaven and in earth is given unto him. And he gave us the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And the beginning key, the master key, is that name of Jesus. I have seen people healed, delivered from horrible addictions and bondages, and none is too hard for God, sister. I've seen the Lord reach down and touch people when we begin to use our faith in that name of Jesus. That crippled man in the Bible came to Jesus. Tommy, a cripple from the war, crippled in his leg, crippled in his emotions, crippled by pain. But that name of Jesus, pain has to bow its knee. Diseases have to bow their knee to that name of Jesus. And in Acts, that crippled man came to Jesus, crippled, broke, no hope, helpless. But there's help today for you in the name of Jesus. Today, with all of my heart, I believe and I know God sent me to minister to you. Jesus said where two or three or more are gathered together in his name and that power, that authority, he said, there I am in the midst. What does that mean? That means when you and I get in agreement together and focus in upon the power of the name of Jesus, he will manifest himself to you at your point of need. Healing will come from heaven and touch you. Some people believe in miracles. Some people don't believe in miracles. Then there are those who believe in miracles, but they don't know how to get a miracle. They think they just happen by chance. No, it's not by chance. It's by faith in Jesus. He said, if you'll have the faith of God and faith in God, he said, nothing would be impossible unto you. Now listen closely. Jesus came to redeem you from the curse of sin so that you can enjoy the blessings of righteousness. Christ redeemed us, Galatians 3.13, from the curse of sin or breaking spiritual divine laws so that the blessings of Abraham would come upon you. Woo! I felt that one, sister. I felt that one, my brother. That the blessing of Abraham, blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed coming in and blessed going out, so that the blessing would come upon you that make a decision from your will to believe. It says, these signs shall follow them that believe. So when you decide right now that you're going to turn your life like Tommy did over to Jesus, your dogs, your cats, your finances, your husband, your wife, your kids, the business, the problems, the cares, today's Bible reading, it says, Lean not unto thine own understanding, but in all, thou, all of thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. There's someone watching me that's very frustrated 
with the direction your life is taking. It's already happening, and you know it's not right. Pray this prayer with me. and Turn your life over to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Let him become the director. Accept by faith that he was your substitute at Calvary, where he bore the curse of all of our sins and mistakes against God and against mankind and against ourselves. Let that shed blood of Jesus cleanse you of all unrighteousness. And then accept by faith the free gift of righteousness which brings the blessings of being right and righteous, that, that, that blessing part of the covenant with God. Are you ready? Pray this prayer with me. Come on. Just turn your life over to him. Turn your mistakes, your problems, there's no guilt and condemnation in Jesus Christ for whom the Son sets free is free. Now, when I start praying, the anointing of God's going to come on you. Kabahasata, manda kabohosoto, manda You Stop running from God's perfect will for you. He'll teach you how to choose the best. And you shall live within God's circle of blessings. Psalms 24, verses 3 and 4. No, 11 and 12. Pray this prayer with me. God in heaven, this day I accept Jesus Christ and how that he bore the curse in his own body, the curse of sin in his body. According to Isaiah 53, by whose stripes I am healed. Jesus, I accept you today as the Messiah the only begotten Son of God. And the signs, wonders, and miracles are proof that you have paid the penalty of our sins and when justice was satisfied, God raised you from the dead. And you're alive today with evidence and proof. Now, O oh God, come into this dear person's heart. Give them a new heart as they focus and lean not as they learn to lean not into their own understanding, which gives us a headache, causes us to worry. God, today, lift that heavy burden off this one that's praying with me now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Now, you are a born again, again, believer. Your name has been written down in the Lamb's book of life. And Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. It's exciting what God is doing in your life. This is the beginning. Now listen closely. Joshua 1 and 8 says, This book of the law, the word of God, shall not depart out of your mouth. Learn, put God's word. It's the sword of the Spirit in your mouth. Um, it says, Riches and honor are in her right hand, and length of days are in her left. This is the greatest success book that has ever been inspired and written by God, not man. Joshua 1 says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and have good success in life. I want to send you a free gift package. First of all, a cassette tape teaching message, not just a sermon, but seven powerful truths that the Lord has given me over the years on how to live within God's circle of blessings. Seven powerful truths. Get this and wear it out and do it. Also, I want to send you a prayer cloth that I have blessed and touched and released the anointing of God into. People are healed by the prayer cloth, Acts 19, verses 12, 11, and 12. This cloth, it's free. Those of you that would like to receive this, and especially those of you that just prayed that prayer with me, there is biblical, scriptural success in life. Hello. And, and I want to teach you over the next few months through cassette tape teachings, books, ministry letters that I will mail to you on how to live within God's circle of blessings.
See, God wants to bring you to a place that everything you touch prospers. Everything you put your hand to. See, there's an anointing on the work of your hands and the inspiration of your mind. And I'm going to help you tune into the frequency so that you can begin to hear the voice of God to you. There's a phone number on the screen. Go to your phone right now and call and my prayer ministry center people there that you'd like to receive that free gift package. It's absolutely free. Now we've got another miracle for you. Cindy, proof, evidence that Jesus Christ is alive today answering prayers. Watch this. For Cindy, the horror began with an invisible puddle of water in front of an ice machine. When I went to open the door, my foot just slid right into the water and the way I was falling was, you know, holding my daughter, she would have taken the brunt of the fall. So I twisted to uh, keep from her, her getting hurt. And when I twisted, I fell and my back, I hit on the left side of my back as I went down. Cindy underwent an agonizing series of tests that revealed a herniated disc in her back. She visited three different orthopedic surgeons. Some recommended surgery, but a fourth doctor told her an operation posed tremendous risks. He said that one, sur uh, one surgery wouldn't do it. He said I would end up having three or four. I could end up, it's a 50-50 chance I could end up worse. The doctor told Cindy to take the pain, and for the next four years, that's what she did, with the help of medication. Still, her husband, Sonny, says life for Cindy and her family changed drastically. You know, there was a lot of stuff she couldn't do around the house, like housework and, you know, uh, riding bikes with the kids or something like that. Sorting clothes. I was sorting clothes one day and just threw a shirt one way, and that did it. I was, it was gone out for a week and a half, almost two weeks. I could not do anything. Things we take for granted every day, doing, you know, walking or twisting or scooting by something, you know, she couldn't do anymore. I was told it could get worse. I could end up in a wheelchair, you know, as I got older, if it wasn't taken care of. And uh, sure, you sit and think of that. Actually, I'd probably just given up on praying. You know, I might even uh, given up expecting a miracle from God. You know, it wasn't saying that he couldn't do it. You know, I still believe that. But it always seems like when, when you least expect something, you know, God always comes through. And that's exactly what happened on an otherwise typical day. Cindy was just trying to lie still when Sonny walked in the room and started flipping TV channels. Rose Kelton was on there, and I said, do you want to watch this, Cindy? And she said, yeah, let's watch it. As Sonny and Cindy listened, they heard Robert Tilton begin to pray for healing. Suddenly, without thinking, Sonny found his hand on the screen, standing in proxy for his disabled wife. And now, Holy Spirit, let the healing power of God flow through my hand, through this television screen, into that woman, into that man. Let them feel your power from the top of their head to the sole of their feet. That's when I felt it. The down. It was like thousands of needles going all over my legs, and just from the waist down, and, and heat. Astonished by the sensation, Cindy sat up. For the first time in four years, her back pain was gone. I've been healed. You what? My back's been healed. Really? Yeah. Praise God. When Cindy contacted the orthopedic surgeon who had warned her against surgery, he agreed her complete recovery was miraculous. When you set your mind to having to live with something like that, and then all of a sudden, you know, it's like someone came in and put a new back in there <laughs> and stuff. So it was, it was neat, you know. It was a, a relief. It was, I was thankful. Cindy has since resumed a full and active life. Now she's not only able to play with her children again, she actually cleans houses for a living. One year after his wife's healing, Sonny remains amazed that his simple act of faith yielded such dramatic results. I kind of believe maybe God was directing my foot, you know, my footsteps, and uh, that everything worked out, you know, just right. With a miracle of faith near Houston, Texas, 
I'm Patty Castleman. While I was watching that just then, I began to hear that still small voice within me about divine direction. First of all, every one of you that's watching me right now, and I guess that'd be you, that has some type of spine problem, neck and back, any sort of numbness or pain is coming because of some type of damage or problem with your spine. I have that commanding faith to break that spirit of infirmity that's attacking you in that area. Probably one of the strongest anointings that I have outside of for prosperity is in the area of pain and the spine. I, you know, now we've seen every kind of miracle imagined, but right now there's a special anointing in the area of that. If you have that problem, I want you to release your faith, which is your servant, Luke 17, and call me right now. And they'll bring me your prayer request. In a few minutes, I'm going to go to my altar and I'm going to kneel. We're opening up our window wide like Daniel did. And I'm going to pray. And you and I are going to agree together as we touch your prayer request for a miracle. And I just got this knowing. It's faith right now. It says, let every man prophesy according to his proportion of faith. Or in other words, what? find out where your faith's at. And that's what I do during the broadcast or when I'm preaching or ministering. And I find out where is that, that spot, that zone, that, that, that place where the Spirit of God is moving. You remember when God said he looked upon the earth and it was void and without form? And then it says the Spirit of God uh, hovered. And the Amplified says like a mother hen over those eggs. And the Spirit of God began to move and bring it back into shape. It's the word I'm getting. And I just sense as I lay my hand on your prayer request at my altar, and then as you stretch your hand out toward mine, like Cindy did, and Tommy, that right there in the middle, right there at that point, Jesus is going to be in the middle, kubahashata, and the healing power of God is going to begin to flow into your back. If you have any type of pain, any type of problem in your back or legs or arms or shoulders or elbows, in fact, any type of arthritis or bursitis, there's some prayer requests already coming in. I'm going to grab a hold of that foul devil that's attacked you. There's a person watching right back of your neck of problems. In fact, you have to really be careful. Your whole neck gets out of shape. There's a person laying on a couch right now. That's that happened to you. There's also a person, something in the lower part of your back, and you, you, you can't pick up things like you used to, and you, you, you are not as mobile, or you, you don't have the maneuverability that you used to, kabahashata. That's a word of knowledge for you. Don't just sit there the rest of your life when the Spirit of God wants to hover and begin to take this thing that's out of shape and come by there, thank you, Lord, and put it back in shape. Now, quickly, just got a moment. We're going to go to another incredible testimonial. But first, I want you to quickly put your faith to work. Faith without action is dead. Faith without action, acts, acts of faith. By calling, you're letting your request be made known. You're getting your faith out there. You're getting yourself into expectancy for a miracle in your life. Now listen closely. Secondly, this is a strong word that I'm receiving right now from the gifts of the Holy Spirit. It's in your Bible, 1 Corinthians 12. Right now, someone for direction. 
the beginning of the broadcast, and then when I begin to quote that scripture, lean not unto thine own understanding. All thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. There's someone watching me. I'm, there's a lot of people watching, but God will touch you, and you'll know you're the one that he's talking to. There's someone watching me. You're very concerned about the direction your life is taking. It's like you've been caught in a whirlpool, and you can't get out of it, okay? And we're going to get Jesus in the midst of that situation. And I want to pray that God touches your eyes and your mind. Papa Bakashata. There's a person. There's a person watching me. There's a man watching me right now that's having that problem. There's also a woman. Something has happened in your life that's hit you and knocked you a different direction than what you set out to go. In fact, you've been very frustrated, felt helpless over the situation. I'm telling you something. God's going to move in divine direction and bring you into a wealthy place. David said, I went through the fire and I went through the storm. But thou, O God, hath brought me out, Psalm 66, brought me out into a wealthy place. And I will pay my vows, which my lips have uttered and my mouth has spoken when I was in trouble. There's a person watching me. Some type of a messed up direction and some is some type of troubles, some type of stress, or some type of care. If you, this person watching me, if you will not sit there in your chair and be lackadaisical toward this prophetic word, I am prophesying that God's going to bring you into a fresh, new, dimension, wealthy place in life, a place of abundance. Kada da basaya. Manda hasata, boho soto. And that curse of poverty is going to be broken off of you. Hello. That's a strong word for someone watch me. If you'd quickly go to your phone. Also today, we're going to send every prayer request that comes in to our World Prayer Center in Jerusalem, Israel where they take those prayer requests and they go to those places where Jesus walked and talked and healed the sick and raised the dead. Our intercessory prayer center, we've had it for years. We're going to send your prayer request to that center. Now quickly go to your phone while we're praying, playing this other Israel piece. In fact, watch this. This is the Judean desert, a wilderness still today thousands of years after Moses and the children of Israel wandered through here. This very same desert Jesus traveled through during his ministry. Not far from here to the west is Jerusalem, the city of peace, the city God chose to put his solemn name upon. We know the Bible tells us in the last days all nations shall flow unto Jerusalem, and from here God's law and God's word goes forth. We also know in the Old Testament that Daniel the prophet opened his window wide open and prayed three times a day facing the city of Jerusalem, praying to the King of Kings. Each day, prayer requests from all over the world arrive at Robert Tilton Ministries' Jerusalem World Prayer Center, where a group of dedicated men and women who are called by God are interceding on your behalf. Within the walls of the Jerusalem World Prayer Center, the sound of voices can be heard. Prayer warriors praying and interceding for your most urgent prayer requests. It is here at this temple of prayer, located in the holy city of Jerusalem, that prayer requests arrive from around the world and are prayed for by this anointed team of intercessors. The time is now to call in your special prayer need. The Bible tells us in the book of James, ye have not because ye ask not. Call now and have your most urgent prayer request sent to the nation of Israel, to the holy city of Jerusalem, to this temple of prayer, the Jerusalem World Prayer Center, so that your most urgent prayer request may be known unto God. Jesus said whenever two or three of you are gathered together in my name, 
there I am in the midst. What a powerful statement, because we know that as we link up together, the United States and Israel, according to Matthew 18, 19, Jesus is here in the midst. There's a number on the bottom of your screen. If you call that number, give the phone ministry your most urgent prayer request. That request will be sent to Pastor Tilton in the United States, where he will personally pray for you. And then your request will be sent here to our World Prayer Center in Jerusalem, where our intercessors here will continue to pray on your behalf. The number's in the bottom of your screen. Call now with your most urgent request so that we can agree together for God's perfect will and plan for your life. The World Prayer Center there in Jerusalem. Intercessors interceding for you on behalf of your loved ones. Next, we're going to Randall and his testimonial of what God's done for him. Watch this. The majestic Rocky Mountains. People from all over the world come to admire their beauty and to ski their treacherous slopes. Randall enjoyed skiing so much, he moved to Colorado. But even the best of athletes must recognize the danger of this sport. I went to do an aerial jump, and when I came down, I was off balance, and I landed on my right ski. It was... Uh, uh, the worst fall that I've, I've taken at that time. And when something happens in your body, you just know it. And when I heard it, I could actually hear it pop. And I could not move it. I couldn't bend it. Um, it was like in a limbo state. And I knew automatically that there was something wrong with the knee. Ski patrol came to Randall's rescue and rushed him to emergency care. They did a real quick check on the knee. And the doctor looked at me and says, you're done. That's it, you know, you're, you're done with work, you're done with skiing. You need to get this operated on as quickly as you can. And he sent me down to a doctor in Gunnison. And uh, the doctor looked at it and x-rayed it, and his diagnosis was the same. A severely torn ligament in his right knee, an injury that could only be corrected through surgery. But finances made that alternative impossible. I didn't have any money i was i didn't have any insurance so the phone call to the parents you know i mean here i am uh no money and i can't drive home because i have a stick shift and had to be my right leg and i couldn't drive my car so my parents had to uh, fly one of my cousins out to uh, drive me back to ohio and it was there in ohio where randall experienced a different kind of pain Depression and hopelessness drove this once active man to a life of sorrow. I was 19 when I moved out, and here I am, 26, unemployed, no insurance and uh, no money, and have to go back to your parents. I mean, it's sort of uh, humiliating. Two months passed, and Randall was still in Ohio living with his parents, spending most of his time in bed, out of work, financially broke, and hopelessly depressed. This enthusiastic skier was ready and anxious to return to the slopes. It was really hard for me. Uh, depression was knocking at my door, and I didn't know where to turn. And I spent a lot of nights watching TV on the couch, just laying there while my mom went to bed. And I just flipped through the channels on the uh, remote, and, uh, and one night something happened. Someone watching that has knee problems right now. I want you to call real quick. You still have time. And he said that there is somebody who's laying on a couch with a bad knee. And don't worry about it. God is going to heal your knee. And the doctors are going to look at you and say you're a one in a million case. Randall stood on that word of knowledge and put his faith into action. He called the Success in Life prayer line, believing God for a miracle. And even while in the operating room, Randall knew that nothing was too big for God. The doctor, he looked at me and he just said, you're a one in a million case, your knee healed itself. He said the knee itself, the ligament, uh, connected to another ligament and was fusing itself together. With his health restored, Randall moved back to Colorado, where he can once again enjoy the excitement of skiing. That winter, I started uh, cliff jumping and um, I was doing things and my skiing progressed and I'm a better skier now than before the accident. As Randall meets the challenge of a difficult course, he looks back on his supernatural healing 
and he realizes that his experience gave him mountain-moving faith. God is real. His word is truth, and that's what Robert Tilton preaches. He preaches the truth. He preaches the word of God, and he tells it like it is. Now I am a, a living proof that healing, supernatural healing, does work, and it does happen. With the miracle of faith from the beautiful mountains of Colorado, I'm Ted Warren. Isn't it amazing what can happen is, as I sit here and you sit or lay there and then we get our faith focused in God and then begin to pray and use that name of Jesus. God is going to mend, listen to me, God is going to mend something back together when we pray in a few minutes at my altar. Someone has something that's been torn apart, physical, mental, wait a minute, a relationship that God is going to mend back together. If that word of knowledge fits you, pabahasata, as we pray together, first it's going to be spiritual, then it's going to be emotional, and there's going to be a healing, a mending back together. If that's you, quickly, don't just sit there. Get your phone, hobble to your phone, limp to your phone, crawl to your phone, whatever. But quickly let your request be made known. Also a person watching, it's not an accident. You got knee problems, God's going to heal your knee like he did Randall's. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's that, it's that glue. Also, someone has something torn in a leg, something torn loose in a leg. You need to quickly call. There's also someone has some kind of a wound several years ago, some type of a, a puncture or a wound, and it, it ripped something. God, I just see God's going to just kind of stick it back together and massage it. Tabahashata. In Jesus' name, there's a bone. There's a person watching, got some kind of a bone problem. Some type of a bone problem did not mend right. Here's another person. A bone did not, it, it was a, a, a break. It didn't mend together right. But God is going to adjust that, and something's going to happen in the area of some type of a nerves. Some type of nerves, 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 nerves. I paid for a girl not too long ago, too, well, it's been a while. She had ripped her ligaments. Doctors had tried to operate, her hand didn't work. But God just touched her hand as we use that name of Jesus. He sent his word, Hadaba, and it healed him. I'm, I'm get, there's, a no, there's a charge. There's a Holy Ghost supernatural charge from mending something back together. Something's been torn apart, and God's going to put it back together. That's a word for someone. If you won't just sit there the rest of your life, but let us get into the midst of prayer together. Together. That's a word. There's also a person that's had something has been taken away from you. You've lost something, something taken away from you, but I'm telling you right now, God's going to restore it. What the enemy has taken away, God is going to restore it to you. If that's you, I want you to quickly, I mean, don't just sit there, but get up and get to your phone right now. There's also a person watching having a problem with a child, a child, a child. What I'm doing, I'm just, I'm just allowing the gifts of the Holy Spirit to bring forth. There's a person with a child. Some, a child needs some type of a healing. There's also a person in the area of their finances. Something's happened on the job, with a job. Quickly, get to your phone. In just a few minutes, I'm going to be going to my miracle prayer altar, and I'm going to kneel. 
lay my right hand on top of your prayer request that you've called in, and I'm going to stretch my other one out toward you. And we're going to start praying in just a few moments. So if you're that person, those words of knowledge have come up to, I want you to quickly go to your phone. In fact, Candy State is going to come now and minister in song, let go and let God have his way. Quit hanging on, getting white knuckles. Let God have his way. And while she's singing, quickly go to your phone and let your request be made known. And then in skins, you've got to let go of the old in order to receive the new. Many times we're prone to hang on to the past when God's got a great future. I'm going over to my altar area now and they're bringing me your prayer request as it comes in. And then we're going to start praying. Me and you and then Jesus. He's going to walk into that room. And as you and I touch our hands together by faith. He's going to bring a healing into your mind and emotions. And that depression, there's a person with depression you need to call. That depression is going to lift off of you. And what I'm seeing, there's a person watching that has this depression, this like a fog that's just hung over you for years. It's a spirit, and it's going to go. And you're going to feel like a brand new person. And it's hindered you and held you back from so many things. It's just been a, an assignment of Satan to destroy you. But it's going to go. If you'll believe that word, so shall you prosper. I'm not a prophet to everyone, but there's certain words that God gives me. And then God takes those things. He says he does nothing except he reveal it to his servants, the prophets, first. And there's a person watching me. I see it like a fog is on you of depression or oppression in that area. And it's just cluttered your thinking. It's held you bound. There's also a person bound by drugs. And you know that's not the answer. God loves you. There's also someone, someone has done something. There's a person, someone has done something to you. They've hurt you deeply. And that wound, it's, about, it's like a broken heart. A broken heart. Again and again and again, I have seen God reach down and touch hearts and heal them. And I'll tell you something. I know what a broken heart is like. And I know what it's like to have to make tough, tough, tough decisions that no one else understands but you and Jesus. And I've seen God reach down and touch, touched me. I've been walking with God for nearly 27 years. In 27 years, you go through some things. Sometimes things happen you don't like. You wish they hadn't happened. But you gotta let go and go on. And sometimes you need someone to pray with you. In my church, people come down at the altar and I lay my hands on them and pray with them. Well, that's what I'm going to do here at my altar. I've got this little altar over here. And I'm going to kneel at that altar. If you want to kneel with me in front of your television set, it's like you're going to kneel in front of the altar with me there at your TV. And when you call, that's you. That's your heart. That's your faith. You've, you've cast your bread, your faith upon the waters. And, and then they bring me your prayer request. Here's Robert. Problems in the area of your back, Robert, from Michigan, up there in the Detroit area. Manda da Bosoya. There's many more just coming in. Carmen's called in knee problems. I tell you, Carmen, the Holy Ghost is going to get down into those knees, and Jesus made those knees, and he can fix those knees. Just says a person having heart problems already, it's hereditary, but I tell you, the whole Jesus redeemed you from the curse of that hereditary disease in your heart, and if you will let your request be made known and open your mouth, speak the word, healing is going to flow into your heart. I'm going to go over there in my area. Dan, just continue to bring 
these people's faith, I mean their prayer request, as quickly as you can to me. If you'd like to receive this free gift, be sure and ask for it, this free gift of that ministry tape. i bring my cloth here. So we kneel here at this altar. All kinds of prayer requests are coming in. And praise reports. Be sure and tell us when God does it. So important to give your testimonial. And don't eat your seed. Be sure and fulfill your vows. Cast your bread on the waters and you will find it again after many days. Hallelujah. Manda kabasata. For I see thee, saith the Lord, and I've touched thee before, but I'm going to touch you again. And again, and again, and again, and again, until every one of those fiery darts of Satan has been quenched, and your thoughts and your mind has been renewed, and my special work for you has gone into operation. For I called you years ago to serve me and to work for me, saith the Lord, not just in a full-time capacity, but wherever I will send you. This is a day of renewing your vows unto me, saith God. Enter back into that covenant and see what I'm going to do for you, for I am going to bless you so you can be a blessing indeed. Thank you, Jesus. That's a word for someone. Got just a few moments, we're going to start praying. Here's Limota and Randy and John and Jasmine. Calling in a praise report, special guidance, cancer, bones are weakening, problems in the back. Calling in a praise report, here's a one-time vow of $500. Anything say anything about money on the broadcast and God's blessing already, people are learning the power of the vow. Thank you, Jesus. And now, my brother, my sister, I lay my right hand on top of your prayer request. This is you. You took the initiative to call, speak to one of my prayer ministers and tell them your need. Now I stretch my other hand out toward you. If you can, put, put your hand on top of mine. Father, in the mighty, powerful name of Jesus, we know when we pray and use our faith in that name, it's the same God as if Jesus himself was talking. Jesus said, Hitherto, in John 14, have you asked nothing in my name? Ask. And whatever we ask, Jesus said, Father, you would see to it that it's done, that our joy would be complete. God, you see those in their back, in their mind, their heart, their emotions, their finances, their marriage, their family, their kids, that oppression. And God, you see, for this purpose was the Son of God manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. You foul spirit of infirmity, I command you now to bow, bow, let go in the authority and the power in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And God, you see that skeptic. God, touch that skeptic. Touch that skeptic. Oh, God, let your power, let the anointing touch them, God, in their mind, in their body. God, move in a supernatural way in their life. God. Let your grace and your mercy flow into that one. God, you see that heart, that heavy, heavy heart. God, let healing flow into that broken heart. And God, that one that's, that spirit of oppression, depression, you foul spirit of oppression, depression, I break your power, your hold. You let go of them. I said you let go of them, you foul devils. In the name of Jesus, I cast you out. I break your power off of them in the name of Jesus. And now, Holy Spirit, flow into that knee, flow into that back, flow into that heart. You see that child, God, that's just been sickly. Oh, God's healing that child, my sister. God, I saw it so clear. God is healing that child. There's a man watching. God, you see that one that just went through their phone. God, when they touch that phone and start calling, let your power flow through that phone from this place. God, flow, flow through that phone, God. Let your healing power go into that ankle. There's an ankle. There's some kind of a problem with a broken ankle years ago, and there's been problems with the bone in the ankle. Problems with the bone in the ankle. If you'll begin to move your ankle around, God is healing that ankle right now as we speak. There's also a person, if you'll bend over now, you'll see that God's just healed your back. There's a neck that was pinched. You couldn't move your head around. It's been like that for some time. 
time, but God is healing that. Begin to move it around. Begin to move it around. Begin to do what you couldn't do. Begin to, there's a shoulder. Just then I saw a shoulder. God's healing a shoulder. God's healing a shoulder. There's also a person that's had deep problems with your breathing. Deep, quickly. Some with breathing, 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 respiratory problems, deep problems. You foul spirit of asthma. You allergies. I break your hold off this man, off this woman, off this child. Go. I release the name of Jesus. Go in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, you see these people that have taken the time to call in their praise reports, calling in God, worshiping you through their giving with thanksgiving offerings. God, you see those that are letting go of the past. Thank you, Lord. Don't look back. Do not look back. The back is past. It's over. Lot's wife looked back, and she's turned into a pillar of salt. Do not look back. Go on. Go on. David said, I can't undo what was done, but I can go on. I want you to go on. I just don't want you to look back. Anytime the devil tries to get you to look back and start thinking about the past, don't do it. Just don't touch it with your mind. Just say, God, I acknowledge you in all of my ways. You said you would inspire my thoughts. You would direct my steps. You would make the crooked places straight before me. God, today I cast all of my care upon you, for you care for me. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Now, be sure and call or write me and share with me what God has done for you today through this broadcast. Revelation 12, 11, they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of your testimonial. And be sure and call and ask that free message on cassette tape on how to live and walk in God's circle of blessings. And now I want to challenge every one of you to worship God today through your giving. When you give God, out of your substance, and he gives seed to the sword. Last week's Bible reading was when Abraham offered up Isaac, and he, Abraham had the revelation, God will provide an offering. Hello. And every time God gives you seed to sow, and then he also gives you bread to eat. So just separate the seed from sowing and the bread from eating, and don't eat your seed. Worship God. That, one of the most powerful ways of worshiping God is through your giving. That's something tangible in the natural you can do. So write me today and enclose a love gift, pay on your vow, worship God through your tithes and offerings, and just keep that seed watered through your giving. And remember, I love you, and God loves you, and the best is yet to come. You've been watching Success in Life with Robert Tilton. It's our prayer that this program has been an inspiration and blessing to you. I am so excited about today because today I'm going to be sharing with you how never to run out of whatever you need. This is not just good hyper rhetoric. This is absolutely the truth. The Bible is filled with people who learned how to never run out of joy or health or finances, how never to run out. God is the God of increase. Now listen to this. Coming up today, you're about to meet three extraordinary people, Lori, Magnolia, and Fred. Now what's special about these people is that they discovered the secret to releasing God's miracle abundance into their lives. Now today, you'll see how God opened up the windows of heaven and poured out his blessings into their lives. Amazing and miraculous events are taking place now throughout the whole country, in fact, around the world. As a result of this very special broadcast, if you're tuning in for the very first time, today get ready for something different, something special, something incredible, real people, real miracles, a real God. Watch this. I simply told Lori a secret to how never to run out I believe it's one of the many, but one of the top, most powerful ways in the Bible that God has instituted on how to get your needs met is by entering into a covenant, a vow of faith, a promise with God. That's what Lori did. She called in. She decided what she wanted. She decided. Two, she decreed it. Three, 
it, became, it came to pass. Job 22 says, 21, verse 21, Acquaint now thyself with him, and be at peace. Thereby good shall come unto thee. Good shall come unto thee. Goes on to say that if you'll return to the Almighty, you shall be built up. Thou shalt lay up gold as dust, and the gold of Ophir as the stones of the brooks. This is in the Bible. God, God said this. Yea, the Almighty shall be your defense, and thou shalt have plenty of silver. For thou shalt have thy delight in the Almighty. And it goes on to say, You shall make your prayer unto him, and he will hear thee, and thou shalt pay thy vows. Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee, and the light of God's favor will shine upon your path. Lori entered into a covenant with God. Psalms 50 verses 14 says, Offer unto God thanksgiving. You thank Him in advance for what He's doing. Thanksgiving, and pay thy vows unto the Most High, and call upon me in the day of your trouble. I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. Lori entered into that favor of God upon her path. She made that vow of faith in faith. Why? God gives seed to the sower and bread to the eaters. Now, if you didn't quite get it on that first incredible testimony on how never to run out, watch this one right now coming up with Magnolia and how she also discovered a powerful truth in the Bible on how to get her faith really out there into the deep and begin to have increase in her life. In fact, Magnolia believed that powerful truth in the Bible. She saw that she could pray, pay her vows, and decree a thing, and it'd be established unto her, Job 22, 21, and the light of God's favor, that's, that's, will shine on your path. She made a vow of faith. I don't know how much, but I challenge people to make a $1,000 vow of faith. You say, you've got to be crazy, preacher. No, I'm talking about using your faith today, not your head and not what you have, but placing a demand upon your heavenly account. A $1,000 vow of faith. You may pay on it weekly or monthly or ever how God leads, but the secret is doing what takes faith. It doesn't mean... I'm not saying you have $1,000 to give to God. Some of you do, and you need to give it. But I'm saying do it in faith. Now, what does that do, Bob? First of all, you're making a faith statement. Remember, God creates the fruit of the lips in Isaiah. Remember, he said, by the increase of your lips shall you be satisfied. A man's belly shall be satisfied. Remember where it says right here that you can pray, pay your vows, and decree a thing. And right here in 2 Corinthians 9, and God is able to make all grace. Every, who is able to do it? God. Every favor and earthly blessing come to you in abundance so that you may always in all circumstances and whatever the need be self-sufficient, possessing enough to require no aid, support, furnished in abundance for every good work and charitable donation. And God who provides seed for the sower and bread for eating will also provide and multiply your resources for sowing. He's talking about money. And increase the fruits of your righteousness all through giving. Malachi 3, why did God say? He said, you're cursed with a curse because you've been robbing me. That's what it says, him. Because you have robbed me, it goes on to say, of your tithes and offerings. Not just tithes, but tithes and offerings. He said, prove me. And see if I will not rebuke the devourer and open the windows of heaven. So you make a vow in faith. You're saying, God, as you give me seed, I will sow that seed toward it on a weekly level or a monthly or ever how God leads or however how God provides the seed. See, I already know that if you will make the vow, God will provide the seed to pay on the vow and will begin to multiply that seed sown. It happened for Laura, happened for Magnolia. See, what I'm saying is, and first of all, Peter came to Jesus and said, do we pay our bills, our tax bills, Jesus? Jesus said, yes. Then Jesus told Peter what to do. He says, go fishing. And the first fish you catch, open its mouth, and there will be money, he says, and pay my bills and your bills, Matthew 17. How does Jesus get his bills paid? By teaching people how to open up their mouths and begin to speak and decree a thing. And he said, it will be established unto thee. 
you need to make a vow of faith. Maybe it's 500 or 100 a month or 30, whatever. But make sure it takes faith. Cain and Abel both gave to God, but God only accepted Abel's gift because in Hebrews it says what he did took faith. He gave a quality, something quality, quality faith to God. The vow is a covenant between you and God. You do your part, God does his part. Jacob, when he had nothing, Genesis 28, when he had nothing, he saw the, the vastness of God and he made God his senior partner. He said, I'll make God, you be my God. And it says he vowest a vow unto God. He vowest a vow. He promised God a vow. He promised it in faith. He says, God, I'll give you a portion, a tithe, a tenth of all that you bless me with beyond where I am right now. Hello. Now that is a deal. You can actually take God as your partner. You realize that J.C. Penney built the vast empire that he had off of giving. He started with giving God 10%, then he moved up all the way to 90, where he lived off the 10, and God got the 90. Why? Because God owns the silver, and the cat says the silver and the gold belongs to him, the cattle on a thousand hills. And it goes on to say, Psalms 24, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. We are here basically with least on a lease, least air, least earth. And as you give God a portion, you're sim simply, so to speak, paying royalties off of what God is allowing us to use. But frankly, we're partners with him in laborers together making a vow of faith. First of all, you'll feel a great excitement and also expectancy and anticipation when you make the vow, A. Eh? Then, as God begins to provide seed, you'll get excited again because you start seeing the hand of God move. Why does God start moving? First of all, you finally got into real Bible faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. He that cometh to God, in Hebrews 11, must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. God begins to reward your faith. I'm looking at a person right now. You need to call. It says in Psalms 50, make a vow, pay it. It's a thanksgiving offering, thanksgiving. You're making thanksgiving when you make a vow. And he said, in the day of trouble, I will hear your prayer and deliver thee. It is no accident God put you in front of this program today. You're sitting there with troubles on every direction. Make a vow of faith today, okay? Where, and, and check yourself, where, where, what takes faith? Is it $30 a month, $100 a month, 